My name is uh, Michael Snodgrass. You guys have heard me talk uh, throughout the time uh, that we have been here. Uh, my presentation today is the d seven deadly signs of garden-style apartments. Seven deadly signs of garden-style apartments. Where I work uh, the, uh, in Gresham, city of Gresham, we have a lot of garden-style apartments. And the garden-style apartments present to us some pretty uh, significant signs of uh, deadly signs that we need to adapt and, and make sure that we are training our, for tactics and strategies to deal specifically with those particular um, things about garden or those particular signs about garden style apartments. So in garden style apartments, why is aggressive firefighting in, in garden style apartments, why is that knowledge, should, should that knowledge be connected together? Is because people live in garden style apartments. People live and die in garden style apartments. They have egress problems, they have access problems, they are, have large setbacks, they have things that are unique to garden style that we can go and drive by a hundred of them, okay, over and over again. We can go on medical aids in garden style apartments and never look at them as fire problems until they are a fire problem. So garden style apartments, what is a garden style apartment? Very first thing, garden style apartments and garden court apartments are two totally different things. Uh, on the radio the other day, I heard somebody size up a garden style, uh, a, a garden court apartment as a garden style apartment. Okay, garden style, you can look it up, it's, it's an architectural term. It means on one piece of property, with landscaping, individualized buildings are placed throughout the single piece of property separated by sidewalks, okay, and landscaping, hence the garden, where the bottom floor exits into a garden space, okay, a space that is landscaped. A garden court is a courtyard where all the doors face into the courtyard. Garden style is unique. I put information about the garden court because they're kind of lumped in together to begin with, but garden court is a significantly different problem. And so let's break down the definition a little bit more about garden style in a size up. And so sizing up garden style apartments, you know you're going to a garden style apartment. It's your, uh, it's your response area, it's your first due, you know the name of the apartment complex, you know that it's garden style, so you should have in your mind that it is already a two or a two and a half in, in, in Gresham. They couldn't, if they built them three stories, they had to put in more fire safety, so they would build two and a half stories where they would push the dirt up against, halfway up against the bottom floor. And, uh, and so we have two to four, uh, four floors on individualized uh, units that are ranging from four units to 16. And there's multiple ones of these buildings in the same property. And again, divided by sidewalks, walkways, ponds, any number of things. Uh, if you find a pond in Gresham, you're probably going to stay well away from it. And uh, it's pretty going to be pretty nasty. But two to four low, uh, low height buildings uh, on a single piece of property separated by landscaping and sidewalks. Building construction is going to be wood frame uh, almost entirely. There could be some mixed materials, but wood frame because of the height, because of uh, the cost, because of everything else, concrete or wood stairwells, uh, different uh, materials on the common patio structures off the back. And so we already know what we're going to. If we're going to our garden style apartment, we already know that it's gonna be, we're gonna arrive, it's gonna, we have arrived to uh, two to four story, 16 unit, uh, wood frame, multi uh, family complex, all right? Not sprinklered, almost, almost always not sprinklered. There might be a sprinkler here or there. Modern construction might have a different code, but primarily they're not normally um, uh, sprinkled. And then the size up. It's going to be an apartment. It's going to have landscaping around it. Where are the front doors at? Are they facing in? 
Are they facing out? Are they in a deep alcove or are they shallow alcove? Is the, is the stairwell underneath a uh, covering or if it, is it exposed? In Oregon, they're usually covered so that the rain and ice don't get on them. Uh, how is the stairwell built? Is it concrete? Is it wood? And is there a courtyard? Again, I'm throwing that courtyard in there because everybody seems to want to lump those two uh, things together. So let's, we'll talk about it. Okay, the size of, we have fire blowing out on the, uh, on the Charlie side most likely because we have fire on the balconies. In uh, most of these units, like to get uh, the fire started on the balcony, either a barbecue or a cigarette smoker or something that's going on to light that, um, that, uh, the, the patio off, which then extends either up into the attic or to the next patio above that. And so we have a large volume of fire, but as we'll cover later, we need to do, uh, understand what is happening when we arrive on scene and the fire is on the outside of the building. Okay, it's a patio fire. We need to know what, where the fire is, where it's going, and what uh, danger the occupants are in. Okay, modern fire behavior, because we seem to get confused on modern fire behavior, uh, okay, because it has a lot of similarities to uh, antique fire behavior. Fire is hot. Smoke is still fuel. Yes, there might be more fuel in it, but smoke is still fuel. Thermal energy flows, okay? We have to think about the energy of a fire flowing uh, up and through buildings. And if you can think and understand what is happening around you, that energy that is flowing around you, fire produces energy. Uh, if you uh, understand how your turnouts work, they're, they're energy sponges, okay? That's what is important to know what is going on. If you're in the fire, uh, if you're around fire, energy is moving around that room, moving through that structure, moving across your body. If you do not understand thermal energy flowing, that is how you are going to get into trouble, all right? And then ventilation is control. It has always been control. Antique ventilation and modern ventilation are all about control. There are certain elements that are different, but ventilation is control. The seven deadly signs at garden-style apartment fires. Okay, we're talking about fire attack. Fire is in a garden-style apartment, and these are the seven deadly signs that we need to watch out for. Okay, number one. Or number seven, counting down. Number seven, we have fire on the Charlie side. On the Charlie side of the building, most likely we are going to have the patio stack, okay? Fire is on the Charlie side. Where is it at? What floor is it at? Where is it going? How do we deal with that? Fire on the Charlie side, if we are going to move, because I don't know everybody's department size, if you're going to move to attack that fire from uh, the outside for as in a transition uh, style, then you're going to require more hose, you're going to require uh, more uh, different tactics, you're going to need to have an understanding of where it's going. If you simply see the puff of smoke coming over the ridge, you might not even know how much fire that you have on that Charlie side. I'm not a big proponent of doing a mandatory 360. If you can imagine doing a 360 on a 16 unit garden style apartment all the way around it, you're gonna eat up a lot of time, but you need to know what is on the Charlie side. If you do not know what is on the Charlie side, it is a deadly sign that you could get in yourself into trouble. Find out what's on the Charlie side. Number six, fire in the stairwell. Except for the bottom floor, there is no way out of a garden-style apartment if the stairwells are compromised. If fire is in the, sta in the stairwell stack, you have to attack that, uh, that fire in the stairwell. You must ga gain superiority of the fire by the application of water to knock that fire down. You might know that there is fire in the stairwell you will know there's fire in the stairwell when this report comes over the radio. We have people jumping from their balconies. Where is the fire? It is in the stairwell. Fortunately, I like fighting fire. I like fighting a lot of fire. We have citizens that open up their sliding glass door to their patio where the fire is, open it, leave it open, run across their apartment, 
fling open the front door and run down the stairs. The thermal energy flow is going to flow out through that apartment from the outside in and flow up that stairwell and then move up the stairwell stack, preventing everyone else from getting out of the building. If you hear that people are jumping from the balconies, it's because the stairwell is on fire, because somebody left their front door open. If you don't know the signs, if you don't understand what's going on, if you're thinking about uh, exposure B and this going on and that going on, fire in the, in the stairwell it needs to be attacked and extinguished. Otherwise, you are going to put people in a cutoff situation where they're either going to die or jump. Okay, number five, fire in the stack. You have two big stacks on a garden-style apartment. You have the stairwell stack, very important. You have the patio stack, very important. If, the pat if it starts low, it's going to go, go up the stack. In the patio, it's going to go into the attic space and start crossing over the attic space. May or may not have a firewall uh, intact, able to prevent it from moving across the uh, attic space. But if you know it's in the stack, it's going to go up. It's going to ladder fuels. There's plenty of fuel to move it uh, up, that, uh, up that height. If it's in the stairwell, especially in Oregon where we have the covered stairwells, that fuel is going to accumulate in, uh, in the covering up high high, and it's not going to come out. The stack is going to be full of superheated gases and fuel, and people are going to open their doors. They're going to run for their life. They're going to leave their doors open. There's a significant, deadly hazard of a sign of fire in the stack, and if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know your job, if you don't know, have the experience, if you don't study garden-style apartments and how they burn, you're going to be behind. You might have people doing things that are going to cost people their lives simply because they stutter step when they should be aggressively attacking, high tempo, combustion suppressing in that stack. If it's on the Charlie side, it's in that patio, we also need to make sure that we are putting water on the fire at the appropriate time. Number four, dirty smoking eaves. If the fire, if the, if the eaves are smoking, the fire has got up there in some way. It most likely raced up the stack, went behind the vinyl siding, burned up, uh, burned up the patio. Somehow, top floor fire went right into the attic. Somehow, it is going to light that attic off. We should be aware of that. Understand that that is a significant problem. It's going to travel laterally across that attic space. The, smoke, uh, the, the fire break is most likely uh, not intact. Somebody cut it open, drilled up, uh, put pipes through it, did something, and we need to uh, understand that that dirty smoke is telling us something, and we need to uh, get up there, pull ceilings, put water, uh, ventilate the volatility out of that attic space. Number three, high energy and a pane of glass. If the fire is on the exterior, it is putting thermal energy against a pane of glass. That pane of glass is eventually going to fail, especially our glorious sliding glass doors. If our citizens have not helped progress the fire into their building uh, by leaving the sliding glass open, they will have... Uh, uh, the fire will go against that sliding glass. There's a significant amount of area there. It will uh, heat up and break, and the fire will be from the outside going onto the inside. If it's in a window and it's coming out the window, it is going to apply thermal energy to the window above it. There's going to be a window directly above it, and that is going to have a tendency to fail. And then you have fire going to the next floor, and you have fire going into the attic space. A deadly sign that we have fire uh, impinging on our citizens in their living areas or doing more damage and that we need to insert ourselves into the equation with aggressive fire tactics, high tempo fire tactics, applying water liberally to the fire until it is extinguished is if we have fire from the outside putting thermal energy on a single pane of glass. It will fail. Two, the garden court apartment. You see a garden court where the door, where the, it's the castle walls are built up and the doors face in. We have a lot of similarities where we have uh, limited egress points through stairwells and we have the opportunity for people to leave their doors open with fire exiting, cutting off egress points where people are jumping out. Garden courts are a special thing that has their own special tactics, but you need to think more hose, more tactics, and understanding where the fire is at and where it's going. Good, number one, 
one deadly sign. You have a report of victims. Report of victims. I, I love my fire department. They're a great fire department. I love your fire department. They're a great fire departments. What I have seen across the board is the uh, a very uh, unique teeter-totter that when the report of victims comes in, either the department rises up to meet that challenge based on their training and experience, or they collapse in a heat where they do the most ridiculous things and they hurt themselves and potentially lose victims. Okay, everyone is susceptible to hearing that on the radio. We have a report of multiple victims trapped on the upper floors. What are you going to do to solve that problem when you arrive? And if it's a garden style apartment, you should know that each floor is going to be a unique apartment and that there could potentially be most likely going to be kids living there, families living there, uh, low income. It's going to be these opportunities for people to be trapped. Okay, how to combat the seven deadly signs, all right? You must train, okay? We talked a lot about training. Here's my three L's of training. Number one, give them a lesson, not set them up for failure. Number two, get in a safe place where uh, failures are acceptable, where learning is acceptable. By giving them the lesson, putting them in a lab, and then checking their learning. That's when you put the test. That's when you put the realism in. Okay, get eyes on the Charlie side. Attack and defend the stairwell. Attack and defend the stairwell. It is important. Okay, extinguish the stack. It's going to move upwards, and we don't want it to. Okay, pull ceilings, apply water, and ven ventilate the volatility until you can make it the aggressive push. Keep fire on the exterior on the exterior, and that is by putting it out while it's on the exterior and putting a hose line inside to keep it out from the in interior. Garden court apartments are dangerous. They need to be trained on. Trained separately, garden style, garden court, and lastly, either rescue or extinguish. Do not put a single crew having to try to do both because it's too much in that level and that intensity in order to handle it. I know some people only have one crew, but for those of us that have multiple, use multiple crews. Remember, the choice is yours. You're either going to leave here, and, and, and I know you won't, you're going to leave here and you're going to, to represent a rodeo clown. You're going to tell your jokes and you're going to get your paycheck and you're going to sit inside of a, of a padded uh, barrel and let the fire knock the hell out of you. Or you're going to be a bullfighter and stand in between the victims you're, or the, the, the people you're uh, assigned to protect and the raging bull of a fire. The choice is yours. Mike Snodgrass, former aggressive firefighter, now high-tempo combustion suppressionist. Thank you very much. Today I'm going to be showing off the, uh, the G1S CBA with the newly released platform, which is 5500 PSI. Same, uh, same G1 technology that we've all seen for the past four years, just a new uh, option for PSI, 5500. So the same amount of air compressed into a slightly smaller package. Um, this SCBA in particular does have the uh, integrated thermal imaging camera um, as well as integrated comms options and buddy breather. Then one of my favorite things about the G1 SCBA is going to be the central power source, one battery that powers all your electronics including um, TIC in this one. So for more information check out msasafety.com and go look at your G1 SCBA.